All right, so let's go ahead and add the onTouch event here because as we said, it's very important because the whole application revolves around the touch event. Let's go to that bottom here. We can actually override the onTouch event. So we can say onTouch and you can see there it is onTouch event method. Say enter and we have the boilerplate and you'll see that we have our boilerplate code. For now, I'm going to just go ahead and say return true because we're going to do some work in here. Now, how do we test it out that this works indeed? I'm going to go ahead and say log here. I'm going to say debug. I'm going to say screen touched. And I'm going to give the actual message, which is going to be hey. Not very descriptive, but <laughs> it works for what we're trying to do here. Let's go ahead and run. So the idea here, if we if this is indeed working, if we touch anywhere in our screen, we should see in our log cat here. Hey, there we go. Look at that. So if we keep touching, you notice that each time you touch, there's a lot that is actually happening here. Let me go clear it out so that way we can actually see. Let's delete. Okay, so pay attention, touch, look at that. Okay, it's very sensitive because we have the whole screen alert to the touch event. Good, so it's working. Obviously, it's, the idea here is to make this a little bit more complex because we want to be able to trace around our finger because that's the idea. In this case, it's going to be, of course, my mouse. But once we put on an actual device, real device, you will be able to have the users to tap their fingers around, move them around, and we're going to be able to fetch the events as they happen. This is a good time for us to look at the background system that allows us to fetch those events, right? The touch events. So for each event that happens, there is this action uh, event that we capture, that it's captured on the screen. The first thing we're going to do here, I'm going to go ahead at the top here. You notice here at the top, we have this event object, which knows exactly what event has been registered as we touch the screen, which means it will have the which means this object here has all of the information that we need. To test things out here, I'm going to actually use that event object and get some information out of it. The first one is going to be, let's say, event, say dot, event, dot. You see, there's a lot of things that we can get here, okay? Action masked. What this does is it gives us the event type that was created, okay? It's going to be an integer. That's the reason why um, we are having an issue here. So let's go ahead and say string that value of, and then enclose that. That way um, we can actually read the value that we're getting. Let's save this and give it a run. Again, let me open the console there. If you tap, See, touch zero, touch one. So it's giving us values of what's going on. So it's actually registering the event type that we are getting. Now let's learn more about this get action masked. What does that really mean? Let's go to our documentation. This is probably the best time for us to go back and look at our documentation and see what can we learn. Let's, for instance, type here. What did we call, let's say, the method is motion event. Let's say motion event and see what can we get. Let's get first one. Okay, so you can read on your own time, uh, but it says that it's object used to report movement, right? So mouse, pen, finger, trackball events. Motion events may hold either absolute or relative movement, movements and other data depending on the type of device, that's what I meant. Okay, so you can read more about it. So essentially it does exactly what we want. And they even have a little bit of code that goes through the process of getting those events and then we can do certain calculations to get exactly what's going on. This one says consuming all samples of for all pointers in a motion event in the time in time order. So this is essentially a really good candidate for what we want to do because 
if you look at the event that we usually use with buttons in Android, it's usually very monotonous, meaning that you only have one event you touch and that's what happens, right? But this with motion event, as the name imply, is the motion that is tracked. So if you move around, then you are able to get all those different points on the screen, which is exactly what we want in order for us to be able to draw things on the screen. Now let's go ahead and find what does, let's go perhaps find some methods. Let's go to methods. So you can say F command find, say, what do we, we want? Get action masked. Click on that. So it says here, it returns the mask action being performed with that pointer index information. So it says use get action index to return the index associated with the pointer. The pointer being the contact point that we are fetching when people touch the screen. Okay, and then if you go further here, it says pointer index is a raw index of pointer to retrieve. Okay, so that's the point at which there is that contact again that we we're talking about here. So there's a lot of information you can go ahead and read on your own time. But th now this goes back to what I have we have discussed earlier, which is we have it's a good idea to always go back to the documentation to learn more about what we're looking at or what we're trying to build. Okay. Because obviously, as you know, you can't memorize everything, but at least you will be able to know where to go to learn more about certain class, certain methods, and so forth. All right, so let's go back to our code here. So we learn about the get action mask. Now, what we need to do here for us to start putting together what needs to be done is we're going to put certain variables here that will hold all of these values such as the get action mask and also get action index, which is going to be the actual pointer of what we're trying to associate with the tap on the screen. So how do we get those values for the first one is going to be int because we know it's going to be an integer, it's going to be an action, we're going to call this an action, this is going to be the event, of course, this event that we're getting from our motion event object that get action masked. Again, like we said, this is essentially just the event type that we are getting. Okay, and the next one is going to be the action index. Okay, so I'm going to say event again that get action index. What this is is the pointer, which in this case is going to be probably uh, going to be the finger or the mouse, since we're testing things. Okay, so anything that is being used to actually touch and go through the screen. Okay. The next thing is we need to determine which type of action uh, is been given by the motion event. Okay, so we have different kind of action. We have, if we go back to our code here, to our documentation, uh, you notice there is this actions for get action index. There's action pointer down, action pointer up. So essentially what this is, is action pointer down is when they press on the screen. Action pointer up is when they actually remove from the screen. Okay, the finger anyway. All right, so we are going to fetch that too because that information, that information is important for us to determine what is happening on the screen as we try to figure out, okay, if they are actually drawing something on the screen. Uh, it may sound a little bit difficult, but in the reality, it really isn't. So the moment you start associating these variables with fingers with what we are doing on the screen then this sounds this doesn't look as bad as hard as it may sound okay so we're going to put an if statement here because we want to fetch we want to know which state what kind of action we are talking about here okay so i'm going to say if action what we created at the top is equal to motion event dot action down like that or is equal to action, which is going to be motion event that action pointer up. Okay, if that's the case, then we know that we are ready to do something. In this case, we know that the screen has been touched, which means the user is about to start moving the finger, their finger on the screen. So in this case here, what we need to do, we're going to call a method, which we'll create called touch started. 
Now this method here will have a few parameters. So I'm going to pass actually event that get x. Okay, and I'm going to pass here the action index because that is the finger. Now we're getting the actual coordinates of where they have tapped or of where they have pressed. Okay, the x value. If we get x value, of course, we also need the y value. So we're going to say event that get y. And of course, we pass the action index as well, which is the finger. Remember here at the top. Okay. And then we pass the event that get pointer ID and we pass the pointer index or action index that is. Okay. So we're passing here the X value, the X coordinate of where they've tapped or pressed on the screen. We also pass the Y and we're passing the ID. We need to get the actual ID of where this happened. All right. So let's go ahead and create this method here at the bottom. Create method. There we go. So for this method, before we go anywhere, let's put an else statement here. So the else statement is going to be, we're going to check, actually it's going to be else if, because we need to check a few things here. So we're going to say if action, in case of action, is actually equal to event or motion event, that is action up, meaning that they have removed the finger from the screen and action is equal to motion event that action pointer up as well. In this case here, we're going to call another method called touch ended, okay, because the touch has ended. And we're going to pass an event get pointer because we need that pointer ID still. I'm going to pass the action index as well. And to finalize, we're going to say else. If all of those fail, we're just going to go ahead and call the touch moved method, which we then pass the event object. This touch moved will then take care of the movement and start drawing things onto the screen. Okay, so again, this may sound a little bit complicated, but fear not, fear not. Remember, the best way to do this is always to use analogies as I'm explaining here. So like I said, we know that action index is just gonna be the finger. We wanna make sure that we know, okay, where is the finger, right? And the event type here, which is the action, is just the event type that we're getting. Is it up, is it down? What kind of event type that we have? That's all. And according to all of those, all of that information, we we are now deciding what to do. The action is down, meaning the finger is down. Then we know that touch has started. So if that happens, then we're gonna get the the x coordinate of the finger where things are happening, as well as the y. And also we need to get the ID of that particular spot because we need that. Just to give you an idea of what this does, I'm gonna go say log that d. I'm gonna say test and I'm going to pass here I'm going to say event dot get pointer ID as such I'm going to pass the action index so we can see what's going to do and of course this is going to show a string so I'm going to say so of course this is going to be an integer so I'm going to say string dot value of so that way we can parse that so we can actually show as a string. So let's save this and run and see what values we're gonna get. Okay, very simply, you can click on that. Okay, let's try. Look at that. It says test zero. And shows all those value as we move around. Okay. So we know that we are getting certain values as we go. In this case, it's just gonna be zero, but at least we know something is happening. All right, very cool. So in the next video, we're going to continue working on our own touch event, as well as these other methods that we created here so that we're able to then start drawing things onto the screen, onto the screen. All right, I'll see you next.